In a previous episode, I stated that the coolant seal failed simply because it was worn out based on seal lip thickness measurements. This showed that the lip thickness at the contact area was roughly 50 micrometer lower than the rest of the lip. I assumed an initial uniform one millimeter lip thickness so that the lower thickness could be fully attributed to wear. However, it seems more likely that the thickness of the lip contact area immediately after manufacturing is actually already lower to begin with because a typical manufacturing process of PTFE rotary shaft seal lips has the following steps. First, a tube of PTFE and additives is manufactured using sintering. Next, the seal is cut off as a washer and widened on a mandrel. Or, after the lip is machined to size, a mandrel is used to form the lip to the desired interference to achieve the optimal lip load. So, here we have the uh, tube. We cut off a washer. Then uh, we clamp the washer. At least that's my imagination. And a mandrel. This is the forming process. And there the lip is formed. And that's the resulting lip. This forming or widening step stretches the lip in circumferential or hoop direction along the inner edge perimeter corresponding to a positive strain. This results in a negative strain in both directions perpendicular to the hoop direction corresponding to a thickness decrease. After installation on a shaft, usually with a diameter larger than the mandrel, these effects become even more pronounced. An approximation of the thickness decrease due to the forming and installation can be calculated by comparing the lip geometry before forming and after installation. The hoop strain, epsilon x, can be calculated as the total increase of the lip inner edge perimeter, delta p, divided by the original perimeter p1, in turn as a function of the diameter d1 before forming and d2 after installation. The strain epsilon z in the local thickness direction is calculated by multiplying hoop strain epsilon x with the material Poisson ratio nu and flipping its sign. This assumes that the lip is free to deform in the local y and z direction, which is not entirely true. Finally, the corresponding thickness decrease is calculated by multiplying epsilon z by the initial thickness. Combining the above yields the equation at the bottom. Before the equation can be used, we have to estimate the inner diameter d1 before forming. For this purpose, I measured various seal dimensions and approximated the seal cross section to consist of only lines and arcs. It's assumed that all strains are very small, so that the center line before and after forming have the same length, shown here as red dash dot lines. Assumed the shown contact conditions. This model conveniently provided the value for D1. Numerically, assuming an initial lip thickness of one millimeter, isotropic material behavior, and a Poisson ratio between 0.3 and 0.5, this results in a thickness decrease between 55 and 92 micron. As said, this is an approximation. In reality, the deformations are more constrained, possibly resulting in lower values. So my earlier thickness reduction measurement of 50 micron can be easily explained by strains induced during lip production and insulation steps instead of only wear. So if the seal is not worn out, why did it start to leak? This problem requires further research.